Hey guys, this is my tutorial on the basics of Objective-C. I'm uh, hoping to do some more advanced tutorials in the future, so think of this as a crash course into Objective-C. We'll go over some object-oriented programming concepts, um, Objective-C specific syntax, so that you can jump into other tutorials with a good working knowledge of the language and concepts. To start, you're going to need Xcode. I'm using Xcode 4, but you can use Xcode 3 if that's what you have. You can download Xcode 4 from the Mac App Store. If you don't have that, it's uh, $4.99. Go ahead and select application from the Mac OS X part and command line tool and go ahead and name it whatever you want. Now look over in your file pane and select main.m. This is where we'll be writing the first part of our code. Because this is a command line application, all of our output will be text, but this can easily translate into games and applications for the iOS or OS X. Xcode builds the beginning of our program for us. You, you can see the main function, which is where everything gets executed in a command line tool. It returns an integer value as two arguments, which we won't be using. And you can go ahead and remove the message to create the NS auto release pool. That's for memory management. And we'll go into that later. And you can delete the message to release the pool as well. Go ahead and press Command R to run the program. Hopefully everything worked. Now let's talk about classes. A class is a classification of an object. So what exactly is an object? Well, an object is just a data structure, and to a computer, basically everything is a data structure. Think of a person. A person has an age, a weight, and a favorite food. And every time we make a person, they will have all those attributes. Using a structure like this can make our programming life simpler, which is what object-oriented programming is all about. Now we need to implement our person into our program. Press Command-N to make a new file. Now select Objective-C class and press Next. We'll talk about subclasses later, so just make it a subclass of NS object for now. Name it person.m. Xcode will automatically make person.h for you as well. It's custom to start your class names with a capital letter. This makes your code more readable for yourself and others. You'll notice that Xcode generated some stuff for us already again. That's okay, you can leave it there. The only thing we're going to remove is the at sign private. Go ahead and get rid of that. We want our instance variables to be public so that any object of any class can access them. Here we'll create our instance variables. Instance variables are just variables that are created when you create an instance of that class. And an instance is just a fancy word for one object. We'll be making an instance of the person class, which could also be called a person object. So inside the interface within the person.h file, we can put our instance variables. Now we talked about every person having an age, a weight, and a favorite food. We'll create those instance variables like this. Now you might be wondering what the asterisk is next to ns string. That just means that that's a pointer. That's a semi-advanced topic that we'll talk about later. These three variables are an integer, a float, and an ns string, as you can see. ns string stands for next step string. A lot of Apple technology contains roots from next step, so you'll see class names prefixed with ns quite often. Now we also need to make these variables properties of the class. This helps the compiler know how to create the setter and getter methods when we synthesize these, and I'll explain this later. Just go ahead and write property, and then assign in parentheses so that it knows to assign, and then just write what the uh, variable is. Okay, so now our interface is finished for this class. Let's jump over to person.m and we can go ahead and synthesize those setter and getter methods I mentioned earlier. For this, you just write at synthesize and then you can just name all the variables at once rather than having to write out what type they are before each one. You'll also notice the already created methods for initializing and deallocating the object. Now that we have our whole class in place, what can we do with it? Let's head back to the main function of our program. To actually create an instance of the person class in our code, you need to declare the variable, allocate some memory, and then initialize the class, which you can do with this code. Now, this may seem a little confusing. What's happening is you're sending the allocate message uh, denoted by alloc to the person class 
which will return an actual instance of that object, and then you're initializing it. So you're just nesting two different messages into one line of code. You might notice the red exclamation point that pops up. All that is saying is that it doesn't know what a person is yet. We need to import the header file of our person class. And this way our code knows where to look when it comes across a reference to the person class. Now that our person has been created, we can start to set variables for the properties. You can do so by typing ian.age equals an age, say 17, ian.weight equals 165.5 or whatever, and ian.favoritefood equals chocolate pie. The at sign in front of the string just tells the compiler that it is an ns string. Now this example might seem kind of pointless, but you could see how in a real application you could have a model built around objects and classes that would suit your needs in the actual application. So let's go ahead and log out these variables to make sure it's working. You can use the string formatters like percent %i for an integer, percent %f for a floating point number, which we used for the weight, and percent at sign to insert a string into your string that you're going to log out. And then after you've written all that out, you end the quotations, put a comma, and then put in order the uh, variables that you wanted to use, like this. Note that they have to be in the same order so that the uh, first one would have to be an integer, second one has to be a float, and third one has to be a ns string in this example. Now, before we do that, I want to show off the real power of having a class. You can create multiple objects of the same class, which is where this really comes in handy. We're going to go ahead and make another person named Karen, and we're going to create them the exact same way that we made Ian, but give them different values for her instance variables. Now, pressing Command R again, you can see that we have successfully logged out those variables. Another important thing about object-oriented programming is that you can give each class specific methods. Methods are how you get your objects to do things, and we're going to build a method in the person.m file. The syntax for building a method goes like this. It's either a dash or a plus, depending on the type of method it is, then the return type in parentheses, and then the name of the method. If we had any parameters we wanted to pass to this method, we would put them after the name, but we'll get into that later. After that, all you have to do is open up some brackets and put in the meat of your method. In this case, we're just going to log out what we had earlier. Now that that's in place, we need to go back to our person.h file, or the header file, and put the method signature in here. Method signature is basically the top line of your method. It just gives some information about the method without actually showing the whole meat of the method. Now head back to your main.m file, and we'll implement our new method. And to get a method to run in Objective-C, you have to send it a message. The syntax for sending a message is opening a bracket, then the name of the object, and then the name of the method that you want to run. We'll do this for Ian and Karen. Notice that we aren't duplicating as much code as we had in the previous example. Now by pressing run at the top or command R, our program should run and it should log out our variables. Knowing the Objective-C language and concepts is vital to OSX and iOS programming. All of the frameworks that you will come across use these ideas for everything. It's important to get down so that my later tutorials will make more sense and you can start to figure it all out. It's pretty overwhelming at first, but uh, you can get some books and good tutorials and it'll start to make sense soon enough. So we've talked about how to create a class, create an object of that class, and how classes will help you in your iOS and OSX programming adventures. I beg you guys to like or dislike this video. If you didn't like it, please, please dislike it and let me know why. Um, that's just going to help me get better at what I'm doing, and I can start putting out better content. Hopefully, there will be more of these, no promises, but anyways, nonetheless, I hope you guys have a great day, my dear friends.